Well, hello, 1P, and welcome to Linear Relations. Uh, we're going to carry on today with our topic of direct variation. Um, and our goal, I know what direct variation means, and I can find an equation from a graph, a table, or a description. So let's take a look at what we mean by direct variation. So here's the definition of direct variation. A relationship shows direct variation if one quantity is just a multiple of the other. That is, we can just multiply the x to find the y. This type of relation is always linear and will always contain the point zero zero. So there's two um, really important things here. It's always linear, so we'll always see a straight line, and it will always have the point zero zero on it. And that is we can just multiply x to get the y. Okay, so let's have a look and see what that looks like in terms of a graph and in terms of a table. So here's our graph of a distance versus time graph. So we could calculate speed from this as we did a couple of days ago if we find the rate of change. And we will do that in just a minute. We'll recap how to find the rate of change from a graph. Um, but this is direct variation and I'm going to show you um, what part of it makes me know that it's direct variation. On the graph, first of all, it's a straight line. So it satisfies this part of being direct variation. It's linear. Okay. And right here, it goes through this point. It goes through the zero point on both scales. So it goes through zero on here, because this starts zero, one, and this goes zero, twenty, forty, sixty, eighty. So it goes through the point zero, zero. So it satisfies the fact that it's linear and the fact that it goes through zero, zero. So it is direct variation. Now, I'm going to make this table from this graph. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to find these points. At time 0, the distance is 0, because here's the time 0, distance 0. So my distance is 0. At time 2, I'm going to go up till I meet the graph. That's the point I'm looking for. So at time 2, the, gra the distance is 40. Now if I were to write that as a point, I would say that this is time 2, distance 40. We always write the x-coordinate, or the the number from the bottom first, and then the y coordinate or the number from the side second. Okay, um, so we need 4. Let's go up and find this point 4. So it looks like it's 4 and 80. So I can write that as 4, comma, 80, and I fill in the table 4 and 80. 80. Now 6 on the graph is right here. So we go up, we put that there. 6 and 120. So I'm going to put that number on the graph, 6 and 120. So we put in 120 here for the distance. And now I can't pick any more points off of the graph, so I'm going to have to do something else to figure out where to go from here. Uh, now notice I have the column for the first difference. 0 to 40 has a first difference of 40. 40 subtract 0. 80 subtract 40 is 40. 120 subtract 80 is 40. So it looks like we're going up by 40 every time. So the next one is going to be 160 and then the next one is going to be 200. And so they all have a difference of 40. Now what do I notice on the table that tells me that this is direct variation. Well, here's what I notice on the table that tells me it's direct variation. This point, that point satisfies going through 0, 0. And the other thing, always linear, well I know this thing is linear because of, whoops, thought I still had my highlighter, because of this column. That column is all the same, and remember when the first differences are the same, the thing is linear. So the important points, and let's put that on whoop, in the highlighter on this graph too, it's a straight line and it goes through the point zero zero, means that when you look at it on the graph, that's what we're looking for, a straight line that goes through the point zero zero. So let's point that out on here. Zero zero and straight line. And here, there's our point zero, zero. And then this implies a straight line. 
Now, what about that other thing here is that we can just multiply x to find the y. Well, let's have a look at this column. What do I have to multiply um, 10 by to get to 200? Well, that answer is 20. I have to multiply by 20 to get from 10 to 200. Does that work all the way up? 8 times 20 is 160. 6 times 20 is 120. 4 times 20 is 80. 2 times 20 is 40. And 0 times 20 is 0. So here's the multiplication. So I can just multiply x by 20. So I take x, multiply it by 20, and I get my value for y. So I can come up with that equation. Take x, multiply by 20, and I get a y. Okay, now let's have a look at the rate of change. How do we find the rate of change from a graph? Well, here's the quick way. From a graph, we pick two points on the graph and find the rise and run between them. And it doesn't matter which two points I pick, just any two points on the graph. So I'm going to pick these two points, these ones here. Now, if I find the rise and run of those two points, I'm trying to find the length of this red line to be the rise and the length of this red line to be the run. Now, you have to pay careful attention to the scale. If I'm going from rise, it's this gap here. I'm going from 40 to 80, and that's a distance of 40. So this has a rise of 40, if I draw in this triangle here. Now, it has a run here, like that. I'm going from 2 to 4. So it only has a run of 2, okay? So it has a rise of 40 and a run of 2. Pay careful attention to the scale. Now, how does that help us find rate of change? Rate of change is rise divided by the run. So the distance divided by the time in this case would be rise divided by the run. And that gives us the unit rate. That gives us how far we go in one hour, the distance for one hour. So in this case, the rise is 40 kilometers and the run over two uh, hours. So if we actually do that division, 40 divided by 2 is going to give us 20 kilometers per hour. Now, how about from a table? It says determine what both the x's and the y's go up or down by. So in this case, I already did that with the first differences. I know that the y's, because that's what the first difference is, the y's, and we call that the change in y. Here's how we write it, delta y. This triangle here is the Greek symbol delta. So we say the change in y, and then we have to figure out what the change in x is too. So what does the x go up by? Because if it doesn't go up by the same thing all the way along, we're kind of clueless in this case. But we've got the same thing here. It goes up by twos all the way along. So we call this column here delta x, the change in x. So we need to determine what both the x's and the y's go up by. Well, and then what? Here's another way to write the rate of change formula. The rate of change, or the rock, uh, equals the change in y over the change in x. And the change in y here is 40. And of course, the y column stands for distance in kilometers, so 40 kilometers. And the change in x, it went up by twos. So the change in x is 2 hours. And again, this is exactly the same as we got here, just picking it off the table rather than picking it off the chart. So our answer is exactly the same, 20 kilometers per hour. That's the rate of change, and in this case, it just happens to be that that rate of change is a speed. Okay, moving right along. In this relation, the uh, quantity on the y-axis was the distance varies directly with the time, which was the quantity along the bottom axis. And remember, when we found that multiple, when we found what we multiply 10 by to get to 200, this is how we did it. This, there's this 20 here. Now, this is no coincidence. This also turns out to be the rate of change. 
See, I had the 20 there, that's the multiple. And then down here, I got 20 both times I tried to find the rate of change. That is no different. Okay, when we find what that multiple is, that's the rate of change. So properties of direct variation. The graph goes through 0, 0. The Y column is just a multiple of the X column. And you can get the Y values by multiplying the X values by the blank, 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 the rate of a change. just like that. Okay, what have, more have we got to talk about here? Example number one. Brooke gets paid for making beaded necklaces. She receives nine dollars for each necklace she completes. Not competes, completes. Uh, complete the table showing that Brooke, what Brooke will be paid for up to 50 necklaces. Okay, so here's the number of necklaces and here's the pay she makes. Now the number of necklaces, we're going to start at zero and we want to get up to 50. Now I'm not going to go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way up to 50. First of all, I didn't leave that much space. Second of all, that's completely useless. I don't need that much information. So I need to get to 50, so I'm going to go up by tens. Ten. 20, 30, 40, 50. So what does she get paid? If she gets paid $9 for every necklace, if she doesn't complete any necklaces, she gets nothing. Nada. Okay. What about if she completes 10 necklaces? She receives $9 for each, so 10 times 9 is $90. What if she completes 20 necklaces, 20 times 9, is 180. Do you see a pattern now so that we don't have to think too much anymore? This thing is going up by 90. So the next one is going to be 270, 360, and 450. And 90 was our first difference. 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. So we want to graph the data. So I need to get from 0 to 50 on the bottom and from 0 to 450 up the side. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to put a 0 here. And if I need to get to 50, how many spaces do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I get 22 spaces. So I need to go to 50. So let's just take a look. It's 50 divided by 22. It says 2.27. Well, I'm not going to have each space be 2.27, so I'm going to round it to each space being 2. So I'm going to go 2, 4, and I'm only going to label every other one. Each space is going to be worth 2, but I'm only going to label every other one. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, whoop, oh, shoot, we're not going to get there. I should have rounded the other direction. Um, all right, well, let that be a learning example, and let's do something a little bit easier. Let's go up by fives, and we'll let each space here, instead of four, be five, so every two spaces, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. And that works. Now, going up the other side, I need to get to 450. Now, there's 22 spaces there as well. Let's try not to round the wrong direction this time. So 450 divided by 22. Okay, they need to at least be 20. I'm going to let each of them be 25. So if I let each of them be 25, then each, every two is going to be 50, and that's what I'm going to mark on. So 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 
350, 400, 450, 500. And now I'm going to graph the data on here. This is the number of necklaces versus the pay that she gets for making these necklaces. Okay, now there's my data. Graphed it all on there. Now notice that I have connected it all with a dotted line. Now that means that there is some useful information between these points, meaning that she could get paid for making five necklaces if we wanted to figure that one out. She could get paid for making seven necklaces if we wanted to use that to figure it out. However, she can't get paid for seven and a half necklaces. So not every point between there is useful information so that's we've done it with a dotted line. So here's her pay versus the number of necklaces. What else does it ask us here? What is the rate of change and what does this represent? Well these are not nice numbers on the graph and I know since the table and this are exactly the same thing I think I'm going to use the table to find the rate of change. I already know that this is my delta y, what my y's go up by. And to figure out my delta x, my change in the x, I look at this and they're each going up by 10. So now that I know what my delta x is, my change in the x, I can find the rate of change by doing the change in y over the change in x, which in this case is going to equal 90 over 10. And remember 90 um, the, the y value was dollars and 10 on the bottom is necklace. So if we take a look at, if we actually do the division, that means nine dollars per necklace. And that we were told that right off the bat that it was nine dollars per necklace. So write an equation for this relationship. Well, if I just take the number of necklaces and multiply them by 9, that gives me this relationship. So if I take the number of necklaces, I don't know what those are, but let's call them n. So we'll say the number of necklaces are n. If I multiply n by 9, so I'm just going to put an n in front of it, and that means n times 9. If I take the number of necklaces and multiply it by 9, I get her pay. Now this isn't usually the way we see it. Usually we see it written as her pay equals nine times the number of necklaces. So we usually see the dependent variable written first. Use your equation to find out how much she would be paid if she completed 120 necklaces. So I'm going to use this equation. This says pay equals nine times n. Well this 120 is the necklaces and our n in our equation stood for the number of necklaces. So that, since that stands for the number of necklaces, I'm going to put brackets where the n was and stick 120 in there. Remember this means multiply. So then I'll just pull out my handy calculator and go 9 times 120 is 1080. So if she makes 120 necklaces, she gets paid $1,080. Now the last one it says, use your equation to determine how many necklaces she would have to make in a month if she hoped to earn 2000 Well, this is not number of necklaces anymore. Now this is pay. So we use this P equals 9N, and instead of P, we're going to write 2000 equals 9n. Now to get n by itself, we've got to remember our algebra. 9 is multiplying, so to undo multiply, I do division. And so I have to do division on both sides. And so when I do division on this side, I get simply n because the 9's cancel each other out. It's kind of like cross multiplying. It's a similar process to cross multiplying. And then I do 2000 divided by 9 and it tells me 222.2. Well, you can't make 0.2 of a necklace, so we got to round that up. 223 necklaces. That's going to give her a little bit more than $2,000, but 
if we rounded it to 222, it would be a little less than 2,000, and she wants to earn that. Okay, a couple of quick questions here. Which graph shows direct variation? Explain why the others do not. Now remember, direct variation goes through 0, 0, and it's a straight line. So we can first eliminate this one and this one because they are not a straight line. And that goes for this too. And so we have a look at the two straight lines and this is the one that goes through 0, 0. So this is the answer. This is the direct variation. This is not 0, 0. So it doesn't work either. And lastly, which table shows direct variation? Explain why the others do not. Okay, which table? We first have to look, it has to go through 0, 0. So we can eliminate this table because it does not go through 0, 0. No 0, 0. Now on this one, they both go through 0, 0. Are they both straight lines? Maybe they both represent direct variation. Well, if you take a look at this one, each one of these go up by $1.25 and so on. But over here, if you look at these, this goes up by 250 and then that goes up by $2. And so right there is enough to, and then this only goes up by $1.50. So right there is enough to say that this um, is not a straight line. So that means this one is the one that shows direct variation. And that completes this video.